oil stays at these prices, there's going to be a, lot, a whole lot of money and it'll exchange bank loans and it'll affect the banking industry. You know, there's no question. If, if oil stays at these prices, there's going to be a lot of money, a whole lot of money, and it'll extend to bank loans and it'll affect the banking industry to some degree. Not that it doesn't, doesn't destroy them or anything, but it, there's a lot of money that's been invested that was not invested based on a $17 or $20 or $25 price for for WTI, West Texas Intermediate Oil. And, uh, uh, but you can do the same thing in copper. You, know, you can do the same thing in, in some of the things we manufacture. I mean, it, it, but with commodities, it's particularly dramatic. And, uh, you know, farmers have been getting lousy prices, but to some extent, the government subsidizes them. I'm all for it, actually. Uh, uh, I'm, uh, but if you're an oil producer, you take your chances on future prices, unless you want to sell a lot of futures forward. When you buy oil, you're betting on oil prices over time, and there's, there's risk. And, and the risk is being realized by oil producers as we speak. If these prices prevail, there will be a lot of bad loans and energy loans. And, and, and if there are bad debts and energy loans, you can imagine what happens to the equity holders. So yes, there's risk. When you buy into an oil, a, a huge oil production company, it is a investment that depends on the price of oil. And you should only own oil uh, if you expect these prices uh, to go up significantly. I don't know whether they'll go up significantly or not. We're in the, we're in the transaction. Our commitment uh, was made on a Sunday uh, when the management of Anadarko favored Chevron and Chevron had a breakup fee of a billion dollars and, and Occidental people have been working on it for several years uh, and it was attractive at oil prices that then prevailed and it doesn't work, obviously. Uh, it doesn't work at $20 a barrel. It certainly doesn't work at minus $37 a barrel, but it doesn't work at $20 a barrel. And everything the oil companies have been doing, whether it's Exxon or Occidental or anybody else, it doesn't work uh, at these oil prices. That's why oil production is going to go down a lot uh, uh, in the next few years because it does not pay to drill now. Oil demand is down dramatically, and and for a while, the Russians and the Saudis were trying to outdo each other in how much oil they could produce. And to that extent, if you're an oxy shareholder, you know, you've, or any shareholder in any oil producing company, uh, you join me in having made a mistake so far in terms of, of where oil prices uh, went, and who knows where they go in the future. I can't remember all the questions that were there, but I would say that people that are on the extremes of both sides are are a little nuts. <laughs> I, I I would hate to have all the hydrocarbons banned in three years, or I, and you, you know you wouldn't want a world. It wouldn't work. And on the other hand, you know what's happening will be adapted to over time, just as we've adapted to to all kinds of things. We'd have no problem owning Costco or Walmart, you know, and and a substantial number of their stores and, uh, you know, they, they sell cigarettes. It's a big item. You know, it's, just, it's, it's something that brings people in. They know the price of cigarettes and, and uh, you know, and they put them up front. It's, it's a very tough thing to decide what companies benefit society more than others. I think Chevron's benefited society in all kinds of ways, and I think it continues to do so, and I think we're going to need a lot of hydrocarbons for a long time, and we'll be very glad we've got them. But... I do think that the world's moving away from them too, and and I, uh, I, I I don't like making the moral judgments on stocks in terms of actually running the businesses, but there's something about every business that if you know what you wouldn't like, uh, and uh, uh, you know meat packers or anything. Have you ever gone through a meat packing? <laughs> you know, if you expect perfection, 
you know, in your spouse or in your friends or in companies, you're not going to find it. Believe me, Chevron is not an evil company in the least. <laughs> and and, and uh, I have no compunction about owning in the least about owning Chevron. And if if we own the entire business, I wouldn't I would not feel uncomfortable about being in that business. You on this subject. I like having big reserves of oil. I would just leave most of the oil we have here and I'd pay whatever the Arabs charge for their oil and I'd pay it cheerfully and conserve my own. I think it's going to be very precious stuff over the next 200 years. And so, and nobody else has my view, so I, it doesn't bother me. I just think they're all wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that long ago that, you know, the idea that anybody produced a barrel of oil was somehow uh, something terrible. I mean, the, just try doing without 11 million barrels a day and see what happens tomorrow. At the moment, at least, most people feel that it's nice to have some oil in this country than not have it. And, uh, and we're using a lot of it. And if we were to try and change over in three years or five years, the odds that it would work well are extremely low, it seems to me. The oil industry is being so vilified now I can hardly think of a more useful industry, more, and I see very little trouble with the oil supply thing in the United States. So I'm basically in love with Standard Oil. So, and I, I don't have this feeling that it's an evil, crazy place. Uh, I, I wish the rest of the world worked as well as our big oil companies. What Vicki Holub was saying ain't nothing but sense. She doesn't know the price of oil next year, nobody does, but um, we decided it made sense, and two weeks later we had 14% of the, of the company. We uh, also already had a preferred stock and warrants, uh, and the story of the preferred stock is we paid $10 billion. and at the end of the March quarter of 2020, we valued that $10 billion uh, for our 10Q. We valued it at five and a half billion, so we had a four and a half billion loss. The world changed. Oil sold for minus thirty-seven dollars a barrel. <laughs> now it's quite apparent, I think, that uh, we should be very happy that we can produce uh, eleven million barrels a day or something of the sort in the United States, rather than being able to produce none and having to find 11 million barrels a day somewhere else in the world to take care of keeping the American industrial machine working. It's just, it's a different business, in effect. In the United States, we produce 11 a fraction million barrels of oil equivalent a day, but if shale st stopped, I mean, it would drop to 6 million very fast. Well, just imagine taking 5 million barrels a day out of the production. Uh, and then we're also taking down our strategic petroleum reserve. We like Occidental's position in the Permian. One day it got to minus $30 a barrel. That was crazy, of course. But, but if oil sells at, at X, you know, you do very well. And if it sells at half of X, you know, your costs are the same. And it doesn't change the production. And it doesn't work as well. But it also brings down the oil production of the United States very fast. So we don't know what oil prices will be, but we do very much like the Occidental position they have, and that's why we financed them a few years ago, and it looked like it was a terrible mistake uh, when the oil market just totally collapsed, and, and then it changed around, and we bought a lot of the common stock. She's an extraordinary manager of Occidental. She knows what happens beneath the surface. We in the United States are lucky to have the ability to produce uh, the kind of oil we've got from shale, but it is not a long-term source. There's speculation about us buying control. We're not going to buy control. <laughs> we don't want to. We've got the right management running it. We can't. We, we wouldn't know what to do, and we will not be making 
any offer for control of, of Occidental, but we love the shares we have. And we may or may not own more in the future, but, but we certainly have warrants on, on uh, which we got as part of the original deal on a very substantial amount of stock at around $59 a share. And, and those warrants last a long time. And I'm glad we have them.